Every dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and your family. Buy groceries, pay school fees, renew your insurance, pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone. And you're guaranteed access to USD cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino-induced drought together. EcoCash. Live life the EcoCash way. The views expressed by our guests in the following video are solely the opinions of our guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of the All A7 Podcast Show. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the Genius Kids, the show where we spotlight the brightest young minds of today. It is here on Genius Kids where the future is now and young innovators lead the way. My name is Ben Yuda, well known as Benny, and I'm going to be your host for today. And today in the studio, we have a truly remarkable guest who is breaking boundaries in the world of robotics. Amel Mugaza. You're going to hear more from Amel Mugaza, guys. And she is a robotics prodigy whose innovative creations are turning heads. As today, today, as we dive into Amel's world of cutting edge technology and explore the brilliant mind behind these extraordinary robots. It's fantastic to have you here, Amel. Is it Amel? Is it Amel? Is Amel Mugaza. Amel. Can I call you Amy? Yeah, you can call me Amy. Yes, thank you very much. Who is Amy? Amy is... I start things. I'm an entrepreneur. I'd like. I'd like to say, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. I'm an engineer. Um. I an engineer and an aspiring engineer. I'm an aspiring engineer, but not a big difference. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm also a swimmer. Mm -hmm. A hockey player. A lot of things. I can't define myself as one thing so you're 12 years old i'm 13 you're 13 yes all right thank you for the correction um how many are you in your family and which position are you in your family as well we are four and i'm the youngest you're the youngest yes but you give debut parents vibes <laughs> <laughs> like you know I'm here. I'm the deputy parent. I'm here. I I I got everything. Yeah, I'm very dependent. I'm very dependent. But you're just myself. the last born. Yeah. What kind of last born are you? A very intelligent one. Oh, I yeah. understand. So, which school do you learn at? I go to Abby's preparatory school. Mm hmm. Who's your favorite teacher? I'm sure you have a favorite teacher. Yes, I do. And my why? favorite teacher is Sir Reggie, and he's my favorite because he teaches me all about robotics. Yeah, because he's into robotics. I knew yeah. I expected that. I wouldn't be here <laughs> if it wasn't for him. So, yes, I would say he's my favorite. So, do scientists also have friends? Do you have friends? Of course, we have friends. <laughs> I have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I would say my main group of friends would include um, Kayla, Darian, and Inzui. I don't really like being amongst big crowds of people. I do have a lot of friends, but I would like to say that some days I just like sticking to my own crowd. A little bit introverted, you know. I don't believe that. <laughs> You're not introverted. I'm, in, I'm an introverted extrovert. Yeah, maybe if you say that. I'm an omnivert, if oh. I'm not wrong. Yeah. 
That, that makes much sense because yeah. you're saying I'm introverted. Yo. I'm a very... If I'm in a specific crowd that I'm used to, then I am very outspoken. Okay, so with your friends, what do you guys do during your spare time? Um, Right now, we're really doing more studying and stuff like that. So we don't really see each other as often as we did. Mm-hmm. But I would say on our spare time, we will um talk virtually on our phones or sometimes we'll go out and just do um random stuff together like swimming or <coughs> just go shopping you know so are your friends also into robotics yes or is it a mixture it's a mixture but my main group of friends like i said they are into robotics okay yeah Amazing. So you won that 2023 Af- Africa Science Buskers Gold Medal. Yes. How do you feel about that? It's a very, it's a very um, good feeling because mm-hmm. every time I think about it, I just feel on top of the world, you know, because we didn't expect to win. Mm-hmm. Like there was very stiff competition and it was like our first time going to something as um, professional. Who was it? It was at Westridge. Oh, um, at Westridge. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it was um it was very stiff because it was our first time doing something as professional as this and just rem- to remember we were sixth graders going against high schoolers oh with goodness. really cool projects so we were very nervous I And you can face all of those Yes Yo well done Yeah What was the project about It was the fingerprint based attendance system is it in school or it can be used anywhere? It can be used anywhere, actually, because mm-hmm. um, the whole thing behind it was that, you know, your teachers, we have teachers and work offices. When you log in and you're like putting your attendance, so teachers take more time um, taking attendance when they could be doing lessons, right? Mm-hmm. So what, when we thought about that, we were like, what could we do to make um, our lessons go faster mm-hmm. and make it more efficient and easier for the teachers? So that's where the fingerprint based attendance system comes in. So all you have to do is just put your fingerprint on there, just like that, and you'll be put in and you log out at the end of the day. And you can even do this at work, universities. Mm-hmm. Um, you can even do it. I would say you could do it at home, but it would be a very different um, thing. Because, mm-hmm. like, it, let's say you had family members. It's more easier because, like, the whole family can log in so that no one else besides, um, no one you, would, you wouldn't expect to come would come. And they can't get into the house. So it's a very um, tight system. It's so, very good. So it records the time that you'd have left school. Yeah, it will record the time. And it will, um, it will say that, let's say, um, it would be me in this instance. Mm-hmm. I log in at 7 and it says... Amel Mugata has logged in at um, 7.30 and she logged out today at 1.30. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Because imagine, if, what if you want to, you don't want to do like your afternoon lessons, you just want to go home early. <laughs> yeah. Well, After your morning lessons, they, t- they need to report. School first, then you can do whatever later. Interesting. So somebody in the comment section asked, um, remember we are live? So this person is asking what robotics is. Like, what is robotics? They don't know. Well, robotics is a branch of engineering and computer science, um, which involves um, manufacturing and I would say it's mostly manufacturing and just building a lot of things and discovering a lot of new stuff in the world of computer science and engineering. Do you do you know the history of robotics though? Um, I can tell you a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. So the first robot was made around the nineteen fifties by an American inventor, George Deval. Mm-hmm. And I think his first project, if I'm not mistaken, was a hydraulic um arm, if I'm not wrong. Yes, it should be something close to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was like 1950s? It's around the 1950s, but if you wanted to find the exact date on Google, it would show um, 1954. <laughs> you, you get to refer me to Google. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just, I, I, I give validated um, information. Okay, yes. so what are some t- types of robots that you know? Um, you have your autonomous robots, your yeah. flying robots, 
and your non-autonomous robots and that's only just a little bit because like we have so many common robots in like robotics like saying all of them would take me at least five minutes or ten they tell you i'm not into science yes if you say auto you said auto autonomous autonomous yes and non-autonomous non-autonomous what's the difference so an autonomous robot can make its own decisions and function by itself Mm -hmm. while a non-autonomous cannot do the same oh yes okay interesting so you know like we're living in in the world where there's so much ai people are always yes. talking about ai you yes. know chat gpt yeah. like what's ai in robotics artificial intelligence it is artificial intelligence i told you i'm not into science <laughs> according, according to you what's like artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is um it gets it gets into it gets information mm-hmm. um and validated <coughs> facts from i would say intelligent people mm-hmm. well yeah something along the lines of that because you know you know how like these days people just go yeah. on ai and they Let's search say for whatever this, uh this chat yeah. gpt they're like can you do this for me yeah. then it will just do exactly the way you would have commanded it to do yeah. so um, that's like, like an autonomous robot oh there's an autonomous robot yeah it's something along the lines of that then the non-autonomous robots cannot do that. Yeah, they can do certain things, what they are designed to do, do but oh. it can't do the same stuff as your regular autonomous robot would be expected to do. No, I understand. Okay. So, so like you mentioned something about like when you're starting your project, the one that won the Africa Science Buscus, you're like you discovered that your teachers are like taking the attendance, attendance register and you thought it's good for you to make the work easier. So do you think uh, robots can actually replace humans in the working space? So my opinion on this is it's kind of 50-50 mm-hmm. because um, as we all know, um, technology is taking over very much so, but... Um, if you think about it, robots can't do some, um, parts of, you know, work that humans can do, like manufacturing. They can't do that unless it would take you at least a a year or more to like get a proper robot to do that. So to get so many to do manufacturing would like take us a long time. So I don't think so. Do robots make decisions though? They can, they do. How? Make, How are they programmed? Yes, yeah. that's, they are programmed to do that, just like an autonomous robot. So meaning there are certain other decisions that they cannot make? They can't make certain mm-hmm. decisions. That's us as humans. Yes. Then fit in and yeah. make those decisions. Yes. So we're not going to be replaced by... <laughs> I mean, in certain sections, mm-hmm. in certain sections of work... Okay, so how many uh, projects have you done so far in robotics? So far in robotics, I've done... I want to say four, including the one I'm doing right now, Mm -hmm. or at least projects that I am going to be presenting publicly. Like right now, we, me, um, Inzui, Inzrashe, and Darian, and me, we are making an application for people struggling with mental health and mental disorders. So, yes, it's, um, that's our project and it's, coming out really soon so yes so amongst your four projects that you've done in robotics yes. Shen, can you say this is the project that i'm proud of like you know that i'm proud of mm-hmm. um I pro- well i haven't come out with this project yet but it's really the one about helping people with mental um health problems mm-hmm. and disorders it's it's really something that i am proud of and i because when I thought about it, I was like, most people can't afford psychiatrists and exactly. therapists. It's, it's, it's quite it's costly. really mm-hmm. expensive. And there was uh, last year, I think there was a really high rise in suicide amongst people in Zimbabwe. True. And most of those people were suffering from depression, anxiety. And you know what? Those people could have gotten help by going to a therapist or a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. And they didn't because it's so expensive. That's where our application comes to help people because it is free, but they are pro features that you can pay for. But your basic needs would be um, free on the application. And I'm sure that that would be less expensive because, you know, yes, like paying, paying for a therapist. It's like, I think the agreed amount would be like at least $4, like $4. 
So, it's affordable though. Yeah, it's, it's re- it really is. Because so, mm-hmm. the main thing we're trying to do, with, um, it's the application is called Save. So the main thing we're trying to do here is we're trying to save people. We're trying to help people. So people on our application, you can also share your story and how the app helped you. So it's kind of like when people read your stories, they can get inspired to also get help or share it with people, you know. So, um, save is a really, it's a really beautiful thing. It is. It really is. Because when I thought about my project, um, sadly, it did not qualify for the Africa Science Buskers of 2024. Mm -hmm. But um, the beauty of our project is that we're going to be helping people. And it's it's really, um, when I thought about it, I was like, people are dying. And I have a lot of family members with um, mental disorders. Like my brother has ADHD. What's that? Um, it's a ten- it's um, attention hyperactive, um, ADHD yeah. Yeah. something along <laughs> something. that. But it's, exactly. he makes him really hyper anxious sometimes and stuff like that. So I a lot of my friends also have like relatives that have like mental disorders. So we were like, guys. Why don't we just do something? And to think of it, like the rates of suicide amongst yeah. the young people has been really high, and especially like, you know, this year. It's around people that are like somewhat close to 18, 17, mostly exactly. teenagers, mm-hmm. which is like close to a few people our age. And we're like, you know what? We want to help people. We want to we wanna change the world with our ideas. And like, I feel like saves just something that's, that's bringing us closer to our goals. Well done. So in making the robots and the projects, what can you say these are some of the challenges that you guys have faced? Um, well, if you're working in teams, something I will say, teamwork is very important. But as you know, everyone has different ideas mm-hmm. and sees things differently. So it's very difficult getting along with your teammates, even if you're close friends. I working would say, with people, my guy. It is very it's hard. A struggle. Even in workplaces, <laughs> it's just like, because you know, yeah, everyone wants to do their own specific thing and add it to that. And like sometimes you have to be like, well, your idea is not the best for this. And it's like that person gets upset. So it's really somehow where you have to um agree and you have to make sure that everyone's comfortable. And, and, and when you're on your end as well, imagine you have, you have your idea, right? And like, this yes. is the best idea that I have. Then yes. the team members are like, ah, oh, no. Nah. Yeah. yeah. Which is, we're not choosing that idea. Definitely. It's, it's very, um, it's very upsetting, I would say. I know. Yeah. So like for somebody who wants to be in robotics, what skills are very important for them to have? Um, for robotics, I would say it's a very long process to learn. So I would say you have to have patience, not only the teachers, but even the learners, they have to have patience because you're going to be doing things with other people, especially if you get to an advanced level, you're going to have to have patience because your team, might, your teammates might not have as, um, much experience or know as much as you so i would say patience is just the key you know what last time i was interviewing somebody who is into chess like she's a chess guru you should watch that episode okay she's talking about patience and mm-hmm. i wanted to do chess and i'm like i'm not even patient it's not justifies why i'm not it's a science okay. person it's okay because <laughs> i also i'm not the most patient person mm-hmm. but i would say um i do try i do try it's at least put effort because we're humans. We're not perfect. We're not like exactly. we're not like our creations, like what 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 we make in robotics. So, I feel like patience is just um, it's a very big thing. And if you 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 learn it as you go. Mm-hmm. But if you're, but you're a last born, you should be patient, my guy. As I, first born, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not patient because you guys take away the patience. Uh, no. No, no, no. It's just you don't understand it from our point of view. <laughs> we, can, we can argue all day about that because yeah. I'm a very proud Jepit parent, guys, and it hasn't, it hasn't been easy okay. dealing with siblings. Yeah. Yo, it's just something else. So are there any particular robots or technologies that you find most interesting? For me, I really do like... Um, I, I like making programs and websites or even autonomous robots. Mm. I feel like... It's mostly interesting because, like, it's a very long process to make them and then program them to do all that stuff. But I feel like at the end of the day, when you finally see that um, all your work and what it's gone into, and it's just what you expected, it's a very, it's a very good feeling. It's a very good feeling. 
I understand. So when you're coming up with the project for the for the robots, like for the idea ideas, how do you guys come up with ideas to say, you know what, we want to work on this robot? Because talking about like the project that we are mentioning mm. about the mental health one, yes. how did you guys get to then say, you know what, out of all the ideas that we have, we are picking this one? Well, like I did say, all of our um, projects have a background or they have a story to it. Mm -hmm. So what we usually do. Um, especially in our robotics class, we take problems that are happening um, in our community or in our country at the moment. And with those um, problems, we try using robotics to find a solution. And I would say it works very well, like the firefighting robot. Mm -hmm. um, so my idea for that one was... There were a lot of fires. It's it's Af you know Africa is a very hot country, and there were a lot of fires happening in our like, like our community. So I was like, you know what? Let's make a firefighting robot because you know firemen also lose their lives in trying to save people. So it was like, let me come up with something where everyone can win in this situation, like everyone's safe. Mm -hmm. And it was um it was a very good project, I would say. I would say it was a very good project, but it needed more work because it was very rushed. It was I a very rushed understand. project. Yeah, it was a very rushed project. Do you have projects that you have worked with, uh, on on your own? Or on just my own. Um, I've done an obstacle avoidance robot. <sighs> my guy, how did you think about that? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So... You know what? It wasn't really something like that. Like, so you know how kids like playing with like a lot mm -hmm. of toys and like all those other like electric cars and stuff like that. So I was like, um, you know what? Why don't we make a toy? But like, it's not really a toy, but it's like, what if we made something that can avoid, they can still play with it mm -hmm. and it's more fun, but it won't get damaged as much by bumping into things and crashing into stuff. So that's where the idea came from, I would say, that um, let's make something that can be as fun as it is, but still um, doesn't get as um, damaged as your regular, uh, like, um, toy would. Mm -hmm. so, so how long did it take you to come up with that? Um, I would say it took, like, it wasn't that hard of a thing. I think it took, like, around a month or something. So it wasn't really that hard. It wasn't long. It was a pretty easy process. It took us like a few weeks. Like in three weeks, we were done with it. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned about your favorite teacher. You're like your favorite teacher is um, Mr. Rage. Yes. Yes. So apart from Mr. Rage's information, what, what resources or tools do you use to start up, start more about robots? Because I know um, he does help you as well. Yeah, he does help mm -hmm. us definitely because we're still students. But um, I would say we use the internet mostly because mm -hmm. um, in our free time, we go to our computer lab and we'll research, you know, on stuff that we would need. We will, um, if we don't research, we also come up with stuff. We go from getting information from other people. We ask people, just go around, you know. So it's either we talk to people to get certain stuff or we go to um, the internet for help, you know? Because sometimes the internet isn't always correct. Yeah, but sometimes it helps. Most most of the time it's correct, mm. but like other times it's just, yeah. I understand. So what advice would you give to somebody who wants to be in robotics just like yourself? Um, advice I would give to someone who wants to join robotics is mm. that um, you can do anything and it might seem like it's hard, but Generally, it actually, it is hard, but it's not as hard as you'd think. Because mm -hmm. robotics is this thing where it's mostly you and it's your ideas and it's what you want to do. That's robotics. Because us as engineers, we're making stuff that we know is going to make the world better and it's going to just be this big thing. So I think that what I would say to them is that you can do anything that you ca want to if you just put all the effort. <sighs> so I can do it. You could. Even though I'm not into science. Yeah, so I can start could. right now. Um, yeah, you could start right now. It's never too late. 
it's I wouldn't say there's anything called too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like school. You can go and get a degree as a doctor, as a lawyer, get a like do anything and you want to know what? There is never a specific age or a specific time in your life where you can be like I can't do this anymore. For if it's work then there's like no specific age. Mm-hmm. I would say that Okay, I've heard about robotics. Yes. So part of your hobbies are poetry. Yes. Like, eh, is mm. it, how is it like, what inspires you to, to do poetry? You're a scientist, my guy. You're an engineer. Emotion. Emotion, feelings. Mm. I'm a very, um, I would say I express myself a lot. I do express myself a lot. So um, what encourages me to do my robotics and like my poetry and my mm. swimming is just, I put a lot of feelings and emotion into it. So for poetry, it's mostly about your emotions because mm-hmm. most of the, like the best um, stories like Romeo and Juliet, it has so much emotion. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, if you're writing poetry, you want your, um, you want people to feel it when they read it. So it's, um, it's mostly emotion, I would say. So according to you as a poet, what as makes a, poet. a good poem? What makes a good poem? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say um, feelings. Yeah, because most of the poems are based on emotions, like yeah, what you it's, mentioned. Yeah, it's just mostly emotion, feelings. Um, like we have sad stories. Mm-hmm. We have angry. We have happy. We have heartbreaking. It's it's just like feelings generally because they're all based on feelings. Poetry is mainly just feelings and emotion. Cause yeah, and, and I understand. I've written I've written like poem. poems before, yeah. but um, good to think of it. The poems that I've written um were based on my sad stories. Yeah, like I remember there's a time when I lost somebody that I really loved. Yeah, and I had to write it down as a poem. And as I read the poem, I was like, "Is this me who wrote this?" Yeah, you know, I couldn't what? believe it. It's very um. Especially, that's the thing about poetry. Mm-hmm. Like you might think, um, do people want to start writing poetry or people who think they can't do it? Poetry is not this thing where you have to master or do anything like that. You can write about your emotions in a certain way. You, could, you, you It's just expressing yourself through characters, through objects, through meanings. It's Poetry is just one of those things where you can just be yourself. You don't have to be up to anyone's expectations generally it's just you should do what you think is how you feel so poetry is just mostly about your feelings i would say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so apart from your poetry and your robotics you play sports do you? yes i do what's your favorite sport my favorite sport it would be swimming swimming, swimming. yeah why swimming i'm a very good swimmer I'm a part of the Greendale Swimming Club and I'm also in the Abbey's Preparatory Swimming Team. What do you enjoy the most about swimming? Like you're like swimming, yeah, you know, swimming. You're like you got it. Um, well, swimming is just one of those things where I know that if I'm amongst people and you know when you're in the water and you're going against people, mm-hmm. I feel especially if it's like a stroke you're really good at, the f- winning feeling when you're... When I would do swimming and I'm winning, it's just like one of those things where I'm like, yeah, this is my sport because I'm not really good at a lot of sports, mm-hmm. but swimming's one of my highest sports. And um, I don't think I would be here today if it wasn't for one of my um, first swimming teachers because um, my mom pulled some strings a long time ago and I actually did swimming lessons with Kirsty Coventry. I've done, I've done lessons with her as well. Yeah, she's, uh, she's, she's a really good... Yeah, she is. Yeah. Uh, but that was like five years ago. Funny thing, her and my mom are still friends to this day. Really? Yeah. But she she can teach really good. She is a very good teacher. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I got my passion for swimming at a really early age. Around like three, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. How old are you, by the way? I'm 13. Are you really 13? Yes, I'm really 13. <laughs> Tell me, you're 13. Mm-hmm. Swimming. We talked about swimming. Mm-hmm. We talked about poetry. Mm-hmm. We talked about robotics. Mm-hmm. What else do you do? I do hockey. <laughs> Why hockey? Hockey is it mandatory at school? No. So at our school, it's kind of the thing where you get to um, 
you get to choose your specific sports during the mm-hmm. season. So for this season, um, I was doing hockey the most because mm-hmm. um, as a short person, I will say <laughs> there are not a lot of sports that accommodate us at our school because we have volleyball, netball mm-hmm. and basketball. And then the only other two sports, if I'm not mistaken, are hockey and soccer. So for me, I have tried basketball. I'm not good at that. I've tried volleyball. At least you've tried. At least you've tried. Yes. <laughs> I have got hit by the ball many times. Surprised I don't have a concussion. I've tried <laughs> netball and I cannot do that. Whereas hockey is, I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm also the vice captain of our hockey team. So, Who's your favorite hockey player? My favorite hockey player? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I have any. I, I am my favorite hockey player. <laughs> I have my favorite hockey player. <laughs> my guy, that's why I said you're not your last born. <laughs> you're giving the first born vibes like, yeah. you know, you know, I got this. Yeah. So do you have any memorable event like or while playing that you can say, oh, I remember this event? Um. Well, my most memorable, so the way we decided to mm. do our captain. So we were going to do um, girls go against boys and we're going to mm-hmm. do like a court. So we mostly have like... um. We mostly have senior, for senior girls, there are only like two senior girls, which are me and Kayla. Mm-hmm. So we were going against grade six girls and grade six boys. So it was like, these guys were in hockey before us and me and Kayla joined like this year. Oh. So it was like, we did a competition to decide who was captain. And um, I just happened to get vice because I'm- And you joined this year. Yeah. So hockey doesn't matter, like your, your height doesn't matter in hockey. <sighs> In hockey, you can do hockey. It, it's hockey is one of those sports that you don't have to like worry about your height, like swimming. Mm-hmm. It's kind of those one of those sports where you're like, okay, I can do this because hockey. We're playing with um sticks, our hockey sticks, and like our pucks. If it's ice hockey, we use pucks. If we're using um, we use hockey balls. If it's land hockey, but yeah, it's just you and your stick and the goalposts. Okay, so how do you get to balance all these activities? Like your, your hobbies, your robotics, your schoolwork. How do you create a balance? Well, one thing I do say is that school, obviously, for me, it yeah. comes first. Mm-hmm. And school will always come first because I will not get anywhere. You can get to places, but you know what? School comes first for me, then my hobbies come second. Like robotics, mm-hmm. I take it as school. I take it as school for oh, me. Oh, robotics. Yeah, I take it as school for me because, you know, not everyone. And I try to tell people this and like, you might not listen to me because I'm just a kid, but like, I try to tell everyone, not every not every person is going to be talented academically. Exactly. And one thing I always try to stress to people is that you could be good at doing anything else. You could be good at fashion. You could mm-hmm. be good at horse riding. You could be good at... Um, running you could be good at anything because that's how the world works you will never you cannot teach someone something that they are not capable of learning you can teach them but they will not like it so I would say um, to a lot of people that you should not push something do you yes let them learn of course kids need to learn we need school but I would say to a lot of parents you should let your kids um pursue you should put them you should give them a lot of options like my mom did and my dad they gave me they introduced me and my brother to like so many opportunities in sports at an early age Mm -hmm. because my mom for my brother it's like my brother he has adhd so yes he performs very well in school but it's not one of the things he wants to pursue he's a really good artist he's very good at art so my mom focuses on art more for him and she focuses on um computer science for me because that's what I like so one thing I always say is that do something you're good at because and you know what you have to appreciate your parents because African parents these days not really these days African parents who say you know what 
if they want to be a lawyer, an engineer, yeah. a doctor, like they don't want to hear about anything else. Saying I want to be an artist, like you're really interested yeah. in art. They will not listen to you. They'll be like, mm, 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 mm. be serious in school. In as much yeah. as we are prioritizing school, like yeah. what you're saying, yeah. school comes first. But for African parents, school is everything. Yeah, school is everything. So your parents, parents, your parents gave you like an options. They're like, ah, you know what? You well, can my do dad anything. was the person who technically started it. Because like around my dad's family, mm-hmm. I would say we have, we have a lot of doctors and like they're just like a lot of successful people generally from specific sectors that include education but then there is like my cousins that are currently pursuing other things one of my cousins is pursuing modeling Mm -hmm. and the other one's pursuing art as well so i would say that um my dad was the person who was like you know what I'm gonna like let you choose what do you think you're really good at Mm -hmm. and an activity you're really good at. And I think that's what African parents don't understand the most is that they don't accept it, but not everyone's gonna be academically smart. Exactly. And I always try to push this that we're not all gonna be academically smart, but you know what? Everyone has a talent and you're gonna be good at that. And it's like if you ignore your child's talent, then they're never gonna be happy with what they do if they get a boring office job and they want to do something like art gaming programming Mm -hmm. they'll never be happy with that i I understand yeah and i wish you could have this discussion with all african parents in one place yeah i would i would (laughs) anyway so um reading novels uh, as part of your hobbies as well yes like which novel do you like the most or the series that you can say this is my Um, favorite a series that I really like and I'm currently reading is Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Yeah, it's a very I don't I don't know about it. <laughs> really? Um no, but it's very it's a very popular book amongst kids. I do know. It's a very it's I really like it. How did you get into reading novels? Um like I said, my mom just my mom's mm-hmm. one of those moms that's really flexible. So, my mom, I wouldn't say I don't want to put it this way in a rude way, but my mom is the type of person who earns a lot of money mm. to the point where she doesn't know how to do with it. So me and my brother love reading comic books and, and like all these other type of books. So my mom just like started buying us like a giant amount of books. And like, even at our house, we have a whole entire library. So it's like, okay, I I, I read at a young age. My mom would read me stories. I like, I like that. So do you also read books and discuss... Um with your friends and your family, maybe probably your mom or your brother. Um, I prefer reading books alone because mm-hmm. I'm the type of person. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I'm the type of person who, if I read a certain chapter and I'm really, I kind of like acting it out. You know, sometimes when I'm by myself in my <laughs> bedroom, I will read a, a certain chapter and then I'll just like flip to my book and then I'll, I'll act it out. So have you ever tried writing novels as well? I do. <laughs> really? I, yeah, that's how I make my novels, guys. I I go I act them out. Serious? Yeah, I have a book um that's based on me. Did you publish it? I haven't, but I would like to. It's not yet finished. I want to like have a lead. St- two books before i publish it you should though yeah so, i'm on my second one okay 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 i understand yeah so who's your favorite author my favorite author would have to be jeff kenny mm-hmm. um yeah he's just what i really like about his writing is that he writes in a certain way that's really funny but then again it's actually re- it can he can he can make like deep um he can make deep conversations really funny Mm-hmm. And I would say that's kind of he has a little bit of dark humor to him, but it's really charming. I would say in for the books, you know, <laughs> for the books, of course, of, of course. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I understand. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So <laughs> the age difference is big. Uh, if he's not in his fifties or forties, no, I understand yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, like for I, the I, books. I, I just don't. I don't want to put anything. <laughs> I don't give wrong information. <laughs> so we talked about a lot of things yeah so career wise where do you see yourself what do you want to do career wise if i'm well some if i don't change my passion from mm-hmm. robotics i i do see myself as a software engineer, engineer. With, with um application with a lot of apps um i see myself as the future elon musk hey yeah i'm not I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take no for an answer and i'm very confident about me being the future mm-hmm. elon musk because i have done stuff and 
made a lot of things that a lot of people my age don't do and i exactly I'm, and just to put it out there guys i'm zimbabwean right? zimbabwe is not like we're still de- a developing country mm-hmm. so the stuff i've done is actually really groundbreaking as it might seem simple to other people i'm the elon musk of zimbabwe and you know what the sky is not even the limit yeah it's not can, it's not even the limit for you because you know what what i always say to people mm-hmm. You can be successful and you can do anything and you can, it's just the crowd you introduce yourself to. It's all about the crowd, the certain amount of people. Mm-hmm. Because there'll, people, there'll be people that like your work and there'll people that don't like your work and then there'll be people in the middle. So what I like doing is go to people in the middle and people who don't, and people who like your work. But I also like going to people who don't like your work. Do you want to know why? Why? They'll give you honest criticism. Exactly. <laughs> <It's> so- <laughs> because, you know, they're just trying to say, you know, we don't like your work. Yeah, we don't all. like your work. We don't and like and your work. And, yeah. and I'm the type of person who, like, a lot of people don't like me because I'm very, I'm, 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 I, I, I speak facts, guys. I, I don't sugarcoat anything. <laughs> I don't sugarcoat. Okay. If I think you look bad, I will tell you you're bad. If I think this doesn't work, I'll be upfront. And I, a lot of my friends also do that. So. That's a topic for another day because I have a lot of questions. <laughs> but in the interest of time, yeah, we're talking the about that today. Yeah. So with all this talent, how do your parents, you talked about how your mom and your dad support you, your parents, authorities, your school support you, like in whatever that you do? Well, I would say for my parents, um, they get me resources, like they get me my kits, they get me my stuff and all that. And you know what? The paying for my robotics lessons, the paying for all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. And then for my school authorities, I mean, like, my teachers are there. They're the ones who are teaching me all about that. They're the ones who inspire me. The, so generally, I would say that um, my teachers are my inspir- My robotics teacher, mm-hmm. Sarah G. Sarah G and Sir Maya are my inspiration. I would say so. Okay, um, so in the interest of time, like I said, yes. um, we don't have much time. You know how time can be very yeah, jealous. Yeah, time flies. Because, the, time <laughs> because the, converse, the conversation is getting more interesting. Yeah, it is. What advice would you give to somebody who is as talented as you are or somebody who is aspiring to be like you? Um, well, one thing I will say, in what I, and everyone mm-hmm. knows this, is that I would say do what you think is going to make you happy do something that you know that this is my thing i'm that person when it comes to this i can do this i i want people to um pursue their dreams and some people think they're not good enough for it but there's nothing that's not good enough exactly you're capable you can you you can do anything Mm -hmm. and you can do anything you want to because it's not like it's one of these things where you're like oh i can't do this or that it's one of those things where you're like, this is my talent. If you can do, even if it's making games, people don't find that as an actual thing. You can do it because mm-hmm. that game developers, guys, the person who made TikTok literally saved us during the pandemic. Exactly. For real. <laughs> guys, even now, if we're being honest, most teenagers were on Instagram, TikTok, were on Snapchat, were on vinyl, were on Vine, I mean. But you know what? The person, who, the people who make those, they are they are app developers, they're software engineers, and that's what I try to tell everyone: you mm-hmm. can pursue anything, do anything, because, um, in the world, I don't think there's anything that's called. We there are so many jobs you could pursue, but it's just the fact that some jobs are not for you, and some things are for you. And that's what I always try to do. Do you know the vibe that you're giving me right now? What? You're giving me some lawyer vibes. Like, you know how lawyers, yeah. if you give them you time know, to speak. Of, you know what? I'm going to finish. You know what? Actually, in my classroom, uh-huh. my teacher says this, and I actually have people to back me up on this. Even mm-hmm. Kayla knows. My teacher, she's like, oh my days, guys. Amy, she might not be the brightest in academics, but she's such a good debater. And I'm like, my guy, if we give you time, if I, if I, if I give you my time right now, we're not going to end this show. Exactly. You on, you just keep on saying something. I know. And you know, whatever that you're saying is very interesting. It and is. Um, I just want to listen. I'm like, okay, okay. Yes. She's a 13-year-old. Let me listen to you. You understand? Like, yeah. there's somebody who is doing incredible things out there. Yes. And, so I'm not going to give you more time. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was good having you on the show. Thank you. Uh, what an incredible journey we had today with Emmy. Is that Emmy? 
Yeah, Amy. Amy. Amy Mogadza. Your passion and innovation in robotics are truly inspiring. Thank you, Amy, for sharing your amazing talents with us. We can't wait to see where robotics is going to take you, actually. Yes. And to our, v- our viewers for Genius Kids, thank you very much for joining us on this episode. Be sure to, tu- to tune in next time as we continue to celebrate the extraordinary achievements of the young, talented geniuses here in Zimbabwe. Until then, keep dreaming and reaching for the stars. See you next time. It's your host, Benny. Wow. That was such, that was so much fun. Every dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and your family. Buy groceries, pay school fees, renew your insurance, pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone. And you're guaranteed access to USD cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino-induced drought together. EcoCash. Live life the EcoCash way. It's the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy.